I'm John White. Today we're going to be talking about some letters that we've gotten in the mailbag on the southern part of the state. And first is, Dear Southwest Yard and Garden, what might be causing the BB size holes in my willow tree? And this is from Charles in Las Cruces. Well, Charles, what's probably happened to your willow tree uh, is something that we do see in the spring, and it's not only on willows, we do see it sometimes on fruit trees as well as some of our pine trees. Uh, so there, I don't know if there's any tree that's really immune to it, but we do have these holes. Sometimes they'll be in straight lines like a, like a machine gun hit the, hit the tree. Other times they'll be concentrated in certain areas, and um, this is caused by a sapsucker, a bird relative of the woodpecker, and it's just basically tapping out this area. A lot of times, again, it's try to get the, the sap and not so much after insects, so it is uh, doing damage here. If it does that kind of damage all the way around the tree, then it, in essence, has girdled the tree or will girdle the branch. So we don't want this to happen a whole lot. Uh, so we can use some kind of barrier like cardboard or aluminum foil or um, you want to be careful about putting too much tree wound dressing in things like this, but you might cover it over with some cardboard and it may just move the bird up or down. It may go you know, down a little further, put another roll, and eventually you can discourage the bird from hitting there. It may go to another tree and you just have to stay after it, but eventually you will win the, the battle. So what's causing that is a yellow-bellied sapsucker. Dear Southwest Yard and Garden, how do you rabbit-proof a garden and young trees? And this is from John and Deming. And uh, John, one of the things about rabbits is that one year they will eat one thing and another year they're going to eat something else. A lot of it depends on what they have to feed on out in the uh, uh, outlying areas. Uh, if they're hungry enough, they'll eat almost anything. And so it's pretty hard to rabbit proof everything. But one way is to use some kind of netting that has a close enough spacing on it or fencing material that has a close enough spacing to keep a rabbit out. And even though these Openings here might only be uh, maybe an inch and a half, two inches. Um, some of the young rabbits can squeeze through this. And so this is good for the bigger rabbits, but the younger rabbits can get through even smaller situations. So sometimes you like to use this uh, bigger fencing and then use the uh, poultry netting, uh, chicken wire, whatever name you want to use for it. Put it on the inside of this. And you do want to put your wire below the ground surface because the rabbits can dig underneath the fencing material. Sometimes you may have some rodents also that are doing damage. But you can see on the tree here, they had the young, or the uh, poultry netting around the base of it. And you can see the damage that was done where the rabbits had pulled the bark loose from the uh, trunk of the tree. So that's uh, damage done from rabbit. So the poultry netting will help to keep it off there, but a rabbit can raise up and feed on the foliage and the bark up higher. So we need even a bigger fence here. And then as this tree begins to grow and puts more uh, growth and thickness on the bark, then it will outgrow it and you can take this away. But this is needed on a lot of your young stuff. And then the poultry netting for a vegetable garden area does need to be enclosed around the entire vegetable garden. And again, sunk down in the ground so that the animals cannot dig underneath the garden area. So uh, hopefully that'll, that'll help, but remember the rabbits are very cunning and they will eat different, different plants in different years. Dear Southwest Yard and Garden, what is causing the sticky, shiny substance on my arborvitae? This is from Ann and Anthony. And uh, arborvitaes are uh, quite common down here in the southern part of the state and they are probably popular all over the country. But when we open them up, we can see that there is a little bit of a shine here on the inside. The stickiness, if you touch it, your fingers are kind of sticky. It's almost like somebody poured sugar on it. And a lot of times you'll find some droppings down on the ground, or if you have a sidewalk nearby, the sidewalk will get kind of shiny and sticky. And this is from the aphids. And there is a particular aphid that hits arborvitae, and it's sucking the juice out of it. And of course, the uh, exudate, the the uh, sugary substance that comes out of the aphid is excreted out onto the leaves, and that's a real um, you know, sugary, stickery. A lot of times you'll find flies and ants attracted to it. So uh, just a good, strong blast of water, maybe a little bit of soap and water, 
uh, just blasted down pretty good. I've never seen them bad enough where they've killed a plant, but they can do, uh, um, you know, zap a little bit of life out of it, so I would try and keep them under control. If you have a lot of ladybugs, then you're getting some natural control, but soap and water is probably a good thing to try and control that with. And again, you'll see it mainly in the summer, I mean in the spring here, and not very much during the summer heat.